What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel and welcome back to yet another video. It's weird doing daily uploads but I'm glad I finally started taking this channel serious because I've left it in the mud for about three years just putting random vlogs at random points and nothing's been consistent but like this is the most consistent my channel has ever been so I'm really gassed at this and guys if you're enjoying the content I'm putting out here please don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and also don't forget to press the bell notification button to be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content. Now I put a tweet out because I won't really sure what video I was going to do and I thought I might as well just do a QA. and a I haven't done a QA and a in a while. I used to bang them out at the start of the year but I haven't done one in ages so I thought let's do a little refresh and let's see what you guys want, wanted to ask me. Now I've got a lot of questions, I've whittled it down to about 10 so if your question isn't in here I'm really sorry. It's either I wanted to focus on other questions or I think I've answered that question before in a previous Q&A so if I haven't answered your question really sorry about that. Uh, but without further ado, let's just go straight into the Q&A. Which WWE match would you watch over and over again? I'm, I'm not sure. I feel like I mm, have to be something high intensity. I'd be more AEW, to be honest, if I'm talking about re-watching stuff. Because those Casino Battle Royales are jokes. I think all the gimmicks are just heightened up to a stupid standard. But it still looks amazing. So... Maybe AEW, but if we're talking about a WWE match, I'm just going to go for my favourite, which is Brock Lesnar, CM Punk. Considering his form since the restart, can Reese James be in the same conversation as Trent Alexander-Arnold and Wamba Saka as England's best right back? To be honest, you shouldn't have been in that debate from the start of the season. We were all saying he had the potential to be in that debate in the future, but no one's saying he should be in that conversation right now. I think that's definitely overhyping him a little bit too much, especially with his drop-in form now. So maybe a conversation for two or three years' time, but it definitely isn't a conversation for right now. Why is your trim so good? you got to shout out my dad for that. He's in the other room. If you didn't see my hair the last couple months, because I wouldn't let anyone on camera see it. I was wearing bare hats indoors looking like an idiot, but I stand by that. My hair was an absolute mess, and the trim job my dad did was amazing, so shout him out for that. Love the daily uploads. Keep it up. Big up yourself. But the question is, do you think Kante is a right centre mid or a centre defensive mid? Right now... Angolo Kante is a ball carrier and he's a centre mid. He's been playing, this is the first time I think he's ever played consistently as a lone DM. Um, under Conte, he was a centre mid, box to box. Under Ranieri, he's a centre mid, box to box. At can before he came to England, he was a box to box centre mid as well. He only really plays defensive mid in France so they can free up Pogba to do more going forward. We played him as a lone DM once before Frank Lampard came to Chelsea and that was that 3-0 loss to Arsenal before Conte switched up the entire formation. So me personally, I've never wanted to see Kante play as a lone DM except when he ages because whenever when he loses his legs and when he loses that intensity in his game, he can change he can change up his style of play, he can become that DM that everyone wants him to be, which he's trying to become right now, but it is still a bit of a struggle because the guy's got the biggest engine in the game and he's just wired to just keep running around and breaking play. That's what he's used to. So it's going to take a little adjustment period, but I definitely think Kante has all the capabilities to be a centre defensive mid. It just takes time to adjust and he will get there. If anything, his biggest area of improvement just needs to be his passing range. But it will grow in time. Kante is a very smart player and he has all the capabilities of a good defensive mid anyway. Favourite moment this season? There is a lot. There is so much. I mean, off the top of my head, we could go Spurs away, Ajax away, Ajax at home. Um, Manchester, no, we weren't there for Manchester City, were we? Liverpool at home in the cup. I low-key want to say Everton away at home as well. Definitely not Everton away. Everton at home. Um, mainly because that's the last game before lockdown, but I'm going Arsenal away, mainly because of how we ended 2019 and also because of how poor 2020 has been since. But the way we ended 2019, going to both big North London rivals and winning away at both of their crowns, and the way we did it at Arsenal as well, the comeback from 1-0 down in the last 10 minutes, literally the limbs there were top five. The limbs were so crazy. Like, even thinking about it, I might try and leave a little clip of it down in this video if I remember. So, check it out. Yeah! 
Uh, favorite game you've ever been to? Wait, why do I even think about this? Is West Brom away when we won the league? I always Here's the thing, I've seen so much good football and I've seen so many amazing moments following this club, but I've only seen us win the title in a match once and that was West Brom away. The concourse, I have never heard a concourse so loud in my life. The away end, I've never heard an away end non-stop chanting for that long, home or away, as in when I'm in Stamford Bridge, their away crowds like that aren't even as loud or as consistent. Um, what was it? Also, I even got my ears cleaned out like two days before that because I had a blocked ear. So imagine how loud that must have been for me. I went to the home game against Middlesbrough straight after that. It sounded like a Champions League night. So yeah, favourite game I've been to, West Brom when Mishi Batshuayi scored and we won the league and I ended up bowling over about 10 different rows onto three 60-year-olds. What does Ross need to do to convince you he can be a squad player for us? Have more impact in terms of goals and assists, to be honest. Like, everyone says it's not really a big part of a game, but it's the most impactful part of a game. Ross Barkley's a good ball carrier, and what's the right way to describe? He has the right idea of what he wants to do in his head. It's just he can't translate it to his feet half the time. He's got a lot more confident, and I will say that's kind of better than a little bit. I think the Watford game was excellent and he got a goal and assist to show for him. That's what I want to see more of. But he just doesn't have that end product and that impact. And in fact, I'm going to add decision making to that as well because he's a good ball carrier but the decision making at the end of the day is poor and it's what kills a lot of counter attacks. If you could translate what he think wants to do in his head to his feet and he was just a little bit quicker, I think he'd be a quality player. Like you could see hints of that player right now. But Nah, I, I just think it's too far off from him. I think it'd be better to get rid or maybe keep him in a depth position. I don't know, but we we got more midfielders coming in, so I'll be real, this position's dwindling as it is. What's your ultimate vision for Blues Fans TV? Keep smashing out the vids, loving the content, and excited to see where you take the channel to. By the way, big up yourself for that. Um, What's my ultimate vision for Blues Fans TV? I want that to go full time. The same way with that I think any fan channel can be full time if they're consistent, especially in the top six. And I don't use that in the case of I'm only in this for the money. It really isn't because of that. I got into fan media because I love the concept of it. I got into vlogging because I like the concept of vlogging and I can look back at my own match day experiences. Like I've spent half my lockdown just watching back my own vlogs, just reliving memories against Ajax, Arsenal, Spurs. West Brom, City, everybody. Because there's great moment there's great moments to look back on and that's why I like that's what I like doing. I like creating content. So ultimate vision for Blues Fans TV, I want it to be full time. My main reason for that is imagine getting money to follow the club you support. That is the dream, like that is fully the dream and it's not to make money out of your club losing because it, it really isn't like that. I think our channel gets more views when we win compared to when we lose so that don't even make sense to me. Sorry about my phone. But yeah, full time vision for Blues Fans TV, uh, just make it full time and get to a million subs. I mean we've hit 100k now so road to 200k and then road to 500 then road to 1 million so we move. What happened with 100% Chelsea? I swear down I answer this question in every Q&A. What happened with 100% Chelsea? Louis was a snake who held money back from everybody and then acted like the channel wasn't earning everything. Wondered why everyone left one by one when everybody, except for Scott who's so far up Louis's arse he can taste his breakfast. Everyone except Scott left because of money disputes and then Louis got sacked. I'm not gonna say you got sacked by but he got sacked so is what it is. Thoughts on what West Ham Fan TV had to say about you? Now this, this was very interesting because I only found out about this last night. Someone just sent it to me through Twitter and it was West Ham Fan TV doing a, 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 is it a podcast or a live broadcast or something. It's a Friday Night Pint episode that they want that they usually do and they were doing it after the West Ham Chelsea result. And Nicky Hawkins had a couple quotes he had to say about me. Basically a little bit of backstory. We were looking for someone to do previews with for the West Ham Chelsea match and I messaged Nicky Hawkins asking if he wanted to do a little preview before the match. Nothing that deep, just do you want to do a preview? Yes or no? Let me know. We'll return the favour as well. We can do Zoom fan cams as well. Nothing that deep. And let's see what Nicky had to say about it. I've got a message on late on when was the Chelsea game? Wednesday. Wednesday. I got a message late on Monday saying that um 
would I be able to do a fan cam with Lewis, who is the, the Chelsea guy um, on Blues Fan TV or whatever. Now, I've watched Lewis over, I've met Lewis once or twice when he used to do something with a, a friend of mine, Louis. And he's never really fucking tickled me up the right way, to be quite honest with you. He's always negative. He hates, he hates West Ham. He calls us all sorts of nonsense. He always thinks we have, you know, thinks we're going to get fucking smashed by him. Thinks they've got a fucking uh, God-given right to thingy. So I didn't answer him because, uh, to be honest with you, it wound me up so much I'd end up arguing with Cunt, to be quite honest with you, and, that, and that's why I wouldn't do something like that. Um, Here's the thing. If you really didn't want to do a preview like that, you could have just said. I mean, I feel like that would be the more professional thing to do. I, I get you end up doing a review of Louis. Don't really care. Other people have done it as well. They said, now we're doing something with Louis instead of you guys. I've never really thought of that in any way. Do what you want. You got a problem with football tweets though? I mean, seriously, like it's nothing even personally directed at you or anyone else at West Ham Fan TV. Like, me personally, I don't think I've ever had a problem with anyone on that channel. The guy in the top left of that video, we did a rap battle with for Football Fan Show and that was great. He seemed like a decent guy. Um, what else? Dan Lawless as well. I've met him plenty of times of Louis to do previews and he seems like a blessed guy. Nicky, I've met once or twice. I think I remember seeing him when we were trying to do fan cams when we lost 1-0 like, at the London Stadium a good couple years ago. I didn't think that was a problem, but this guy really has this sort of an issue with me over football tweets. I, I really don't get it, but let's keep looking. You know, I'm always very respectful to other clubs. I'm always very humble and all that. He isn't, you know, he he's not very humble or, or, or or, you know, he, he thinks Chelsea are the, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, sometimes you just have to take... Now, I watch the watch along. Some... Wait, 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 wait. See that? The guy couldn't even complete his point. He said, there's nothing wrong with me thinking Chelsea are the best. Of course, there's nothing wrong with me thinking Chelsea are the best. I'm a Chelsea fan. You are a West Ham fan. You are going to think West Ham are the best. You guys are going to back West Ham to the death. Same thing with me with Chelsea. I am a humble guy, but football Twitter is just something completely different. Everyone is ruthless on football Twitter and everyone just takes the piss on it. No one takes this app seriously. And if you take this app seriously, then there's some serious questions that need to be asked. I'm not even here trying to insult anybody or air anybody out like this but you guys went for me in a podcast so of course i'm gonna respond on it on here in fact when i say you guys it really is just nicky hawkins it isn't anybody else i don't get this like football tweets really get you this sort this level of trigger that you don't want to do content i don't really mind if you don't like me but it's the reasons for it football tweets like it's West Ham Chelsea. It is a big rivalry for both clubs. It's like me saying, well, not to the same extent, but it's like me saying um, some Tottenham fans aren't t aren't respectful enough of Arsenal, or some West Ham fans aren't respectful enough of Millwall, or some United fans don't respect Manchester City enough. I mean, yes, it's football rivalries. As a Chelsea fan, I do not respect West Ham. I don't respect Arsenal. I don't respect Tottenham because I am a Chelsea fan. I'm built not to like these guys no not to like these teams but that doesn't mean i'm not a humble guy i mean here's the thing you guys watch this watch any of my previews with expressions or with troops ask me if i have the same energy that i have on twitter because i really don't i am a lot more level-headed when it comes to those previews i'm a lot more calmer i have been aired out in previews even in the comment section by people saying this isn't the same Lewis and by the people that I'm presenting with do you not think expressions had me had half the Twitter timeline calling me Ethiopian Carlton Banks and not and whatnot and what you think I'm gonna be angry at him and not do a preview with him because he's cussed me out no it's a joke it's all it's all bad so like, I'm taking it as it is the game is the game troops he's probably said some stuff about me as yeah he has as well in the biased Premier League shows when he's been talking about Chelsea they've had a drop of form do I care no 
It's football banter. I don't care about that. It's never going to rub me the wrong way. At the worst, it's going in one ear, out the other ear if it's a bit too serious. But it's not that deep. It's really not that deep. How are you getting that annoyed at the fact that I don't like West Ham that much? I mean, come on, I've got a good reason to have a Chelsea fan. And our record isn't even that good against you guys as well. You said in your big podcast that we've won two in our last nine. We've won one in our last four at your ground. Five, in fact, now, because we lost a couple days ago. It is what it is. I've been rinsed by West Ham fans over the last week. I've been rinsed back in November when we lost 1-0 at Stamford Bridge. It is what it is. But let's just keep going. Now, I watched the watch along. Some people sent me some clips of a watch along. My God, some of the things. He wants West Ham to... He wants West Ham to go down, which is... Nah, from, uh, he wants Lampard to, you know, come on and take a fucking free kick and smash it in the top corner and then spit on the West Ham badge and all this. We can't, they're not going to do the double over us, blah, blah, blah. Just a whinging, moaning, pissing little kid that fucking thinks I'm going to go on there and, and fucking, you know, uh, uh, and sort of make an argument for him. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that because until he gets a little bit of humility, a little bit of humbleness, they can go fuck theirself. Here's the thing. He talked about humility and he talked about humbleness and then he's just told us all to go fuck ourselves. Which kind of doesn't really make sense. This guy's talking about respect, humility and humbleness. I've never told any of you guys to go fuck yourselves. I've never told, I've never said anything negative about any of you guys personally. I don't even know the two guys at the bottom half of the screen. I've never met them before personally. So I, I really, this, this whole thing sounds so double-sided and if, if, do people really get this triggered off my tweets? Because here's the thing, it's not serious. It is never serious. It is football tweets. How can you guys get that angry over football banter and you're running a football fan channel? You guys also support West Ham as well. I mean, come on, not going to lie. West Ham's record as a football club aren't that great. You lot must be getting football banter a lot. You really can't take it? As a Chelsea fan, I've had my fair share of banter and I've taken it every 